Hello and welcome back to the North American LCS. I'm Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns, and I'm adding a little neutral evil to my desk with Aiden Zyrene Moon. I don't know why I was neutral evil. I was like, I, I never imagined good you spectrum. as a bad guy. I never imagined you as a bad guy, but apparently that's your thing. Well, the bad guy never thinks of the bad guy, but I get that. Okay, the bad guy's buddy apparently never thinks he's the bad guy too. But first up, we're gonna load into this game looking at the blue side. It's FlyQuest with Flame in the top lane. Shrimp now taking the spot in the jungle. Keen mid. Wild Turtle bottom, Stunt on support, and Coach Rabbit Star. And that means heading off against them on the red side, it's Team Liquid. In the top lane, it's going to be Impact, Jungle Smithy, Poe Belter in mid, Double Lifted Bot with support Olay and Coach Kane. Now, FlyQuest finds themselves in the middle of the standings this week after losing to Optic. And one way they're looking to shake things up a bit in week three is by bringing in Shrimp. Yeah, it's actually an interesting change because the last time we saw Shrimp was in the regional qualifier with Dignitas. So it hasn't actually been that long since we last saw him on stage. But keep in mind that back on Dig, he was playing alongside Keen in the mid lane. So we'll see if that jungle mid synergy can help the team bounce back from last, uh, last week. Yeah, but they are up against Team Liquid, though, who have had the fastest game of the split last week at 27 minutes and 31 seconds. Yeah, after losing to 100 Thieves, they came back pretty much with a vengeance in a super dominant, super fast game that had a plan from the beginning. And you can see that all of Team Liquid were following through with it. And where FlyQuest's issues stem from their bottom lane in the last week, a lot of TL's strength and where they can focus their resources and see immediate returns is the bottom lane with Double Lift and Olay. And on this patch with the changes to the Relic Shield, you can't hide from this duo. That's always problematic when you're in a matchup like that where one of your team's weaknesses lines up with one of your opponent's greatest strengths because you know they're going to go for that weak spot. They're going to look to punish that. And if they get away with it, it's going to be difficult to come back and find a way. And this bottom lane matchup is incredibly important in my mind because if you think about these players' careers for a, just a second here, back on TSM when they were using Wild Turtle in spring of 2017, everybody was waiting kind of for Double Lift to come back in summer and kind of replace him. And then if you look at last year on Immortals, Stunt was underneath Ole the entire time as the sub who never got to see play time. So there's a little bit of a chip on both these guys' shoulders, and we're looking at kind of, I would say, the second string versus the first string here in that bottom lane. Well, we're going to see a couple bottom lane focused bands to start us off in this champion select. Kog'Maw and Tristana, two of those big scaling hyper carry AD carries, going to be removed from the pool Ooh. as Talia is also banned away, and the Nunu that we've seen a bit of so far today, we will not see here again. Interesting that we see the Talia being banned away because I think mid has so many champions right now, but it looks like an AD carry focus alongside things like the Nunu being banned away that would enable AD carries. So we've been focusing on that bottom lane a little bit in terms of, you know, the setup to the game here. And it looks like the bands are mostly focused towards that as well, leaving mid things like Galio, Azir, Rise very open and Zoe. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff still left on the table. Liquid does have one more band to go with four seconds left to decide on exactly what they want to remove from the pool. We did see Zoe do some amazing things earlier today, so we will see her band out yet again. Very seldom you actually see that champion get to go through. Yeah. But FlyQuest, now for first pick, grab the Galio. I feel like you have to grab the Galio here or else you give up Galio Jarvan or Galio Camille, the Thunderdome composition. But now if you're Team Liquid, you probably have to give one of those away because picking both means you definitely know where the top is and you definitely know where the jungler is. Because if you pick Camille, she's kind of a flex pick, but Jarvan, not so much. So I feel like a pivot from TL will come out here with something like the Azir to try and play around that. I mean, we could always throw back to the early 2017 days where Camille literally anywhere was viable. Maybe go with a Camille support, something along those lines. But instead, Team Ooh. Liquid, they're going for that Corky. Could be seeing more picks like this there in the mid lane as trolling around a little bit, picking up the Aatrox hover. Still got 20 seconds to decide what they want to do with this second pick. Frontline seems to be what they're pondering right now. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to pick some, I would say, kind of core champions here, match up in that mid lane. And there's the AD carry. Would it be the Varus that Apto has been all over saying in solo queue? <laughs> Varus is definitely the champion to pick. And yeah, I like that they get two kind of AD carry or marksman picks here when marksmen have been kind of banned away in the pan phase. Mm -hmm. Fly quest. Now, how do you respond to this? You know what your opponent's mid laner is. You know what the AD carry is. That back line, those damage dealers, you're familiar with what you've got to go up against. How do you choose to counter it? And one way that you can deal with some immobile champions like that is with Ooh. some solid engage, like what you can get from Rakan. Yeah, I feel like this might be Josiah Rakan coming out here as a duo. And we talked about, you know, Camille plus Jarvan being like a Galio synergy. Well, Rakan was one of the first ones as well in that pile to help with Galio entering a fight. There's a lot of engage here on FlyQuest's side. And if you're looking at Doublelift, who just locked in a no mobility spell AD carry, 
He's going to be a prime focus, so I love the Tom Kench here before the bands can come through. Yeah. Unbenching the Kench, making it so you have an escape plan for that no escape AD carry that otherwise is just dead in the water if he gets engaged on. It really shows this team is going to be looking out for him like we expected them to do. We're saying, hey, this is the win condition. This is what we expect these guys to play to. No surprises so far. Let's see they how they tackle the second part of the bands here. And right now, junglers have not been picked up from both sides, so we saw the Zac hover, and that's been banned away now. Not really too surprised. I mean, you've got Zaya who can get out of it with her ulti, you've got the Varus who can escape via the Kench, but we've seen yeah. Zac be used to great effect so far in the first couple weeks in North American LCS. So. I, th I feel like Team Liquid's bans here will be focused towards trying to have less engage on the side of FlyQuest, because right now they have a lot of it, and then you can't really over-index on engage, I would say, because if the Varus gets away from one engage, you want to have two, three to just keep going in and keep piling on. So things like the Zac that can jump into the back line after a Recon engage, I like the ban there. I expect another one to come through, potentially something like Jarvan or Sejuani, if you want to pick up the other one yourselves here. But the Gragas ban away from FlyQuest, I feel, kind of helps TL a bit. And yeah, they're going to take away another one of the engagers with the Camille, so... It just looks like that's the plan, is just get that pool of junglers that can engage a little bit smaller. At the same time, I can respect what FlyQuest is doing here. I mean, we've seen Nick Smithy play Gragas a lot in the past. We know it's a champion he's very familiar with, he's very capable on, so taking that off the table, not really too big of a surprise to me. FlyQuest now banning away the Gangplank as their last ban. They're saying, hey, we know you haven't picked your top laner yet. We really don't want to see more damage potential on your team. So they're going to remove that from the pool. Team Liquid now, what do you pick here? You yeah. said, Zyrene, junglers are still on the table. You want to be thinking about the engage, thinking about that priority in terms of what you want in the jungle. And it looks like that ever popular Sejuani pick goes over the lead. Yeah, Xmithy with the Sejuani there. It was kind of between Sejuani and Jarvan. It's better for FlyQuest to have Jarvan, I would say. Uh, but it's also better for Team Liquid to have Sejuani. Because if they wanted to take the Jarvan away, it's more of an engaged champion than a peeling champion. And right. I think Sejuani can fall into the peel category a little bit more than the Jarvan can. So it will help Team Liquid play to their strengths. And that's kind of why they didn't pick up the Jarvan themselves, even though it would have stunted FlyQuest. So both teams get what they want. And in a situation like this, you favor your own win conditions mm -hmm. over shutting down theirs, which is an interesting thing to weigh back and forth. But the final pick for FlyQuest alongside that Jarvan is going to be Nar for the top side, as now Team Liquid gets to counterpick that top lane. But Nar's a pretty solid lane into almost anything. Yeah, Jace is kind of one that can mess with him. Camille is the other one that does give Nara a hard time. Uh, Yasuo, if you want to go really crazy. Yeah. But there is things like Orin and Maokai that exist for that late game, and it's going to be a tank here for Impact. All right, now that, you talked about picking up Sejuani because she's capable of peeling. Well, Orin has an incredible wall of CC to have to get through. If you're going after the carries, he can throw his pillar back on top of his own guys, charge into it, summon that Call of the Forge God to make sure you can't do anything else as you dive towards that back line. FlyQuest is going to need some solid engages here to get through that wall that Liquid has built for themselves and get at those carries. And when we were talking about FlyQuest having an 8,000 gold lead in their first matchup and then ending up losing uh, that matchup to Golden Guardians, and then uh, the next one, they ended up having, or sorry, winning that one um, from a come behind. Sorry, they were down. And then ending up giving Optic their first win. <laughs> they have to kind of focus on closing games. This is an improvement from their week one performances, but. The big thing here is closing these games. Engage is going to help you do that. Go forward, push forward, get those engages off. And that's what you're looking for FlyQuest here in this game with this Galio Thunderdome comp. I mean, we've seen so many games so far just in these first couple weeks of play that go for a really long time. I mean, we've seen 50 minute games. We've seen a lot of 40 something minute games. And a lot of times these teams are struggling to find those opportunities. They're not creating opportunities for themselves to make these plays happen soon and happen explosively. And you can say that a lot of it has to do with the meta, a lot of it has to do with just the way the game favors safety right now. But being able to make those opportunities for yourself and find those chances, find those ways to accelerate the game really separates a good team from a damn good team to me. And you always want to be a damn good team. Absolutely. It's great you do. for the game, it's great for the standings, and it's great for the viewers which is exactly what they are going to be viewing right now as we get into game FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. Two and two versus three and one. Both teams doing pretty well for themselves. For FlyQuest, if you win against Team Liquid, you're making a statement. People are high on Team Liquid this season. This team looks really, really good. If you're Team Liquid, you need to beat FlyQuest to make sure that attitude sticks around. Exactly. And if TL end up winning, there's a four-way tie for first place. And as much as the standings you know, shift around, the more they stay the same, and we're back at that pretenders versus contenders week that we had before. All right, level ones. Let's see if we get anything too crazy here. As Stunt actually makes his grand entrance over the wall and positions himself behind Double Lift. 
This could be interesting. I'm not sure we'll get something out of it for sure. Yeah, so it's, it's a weird thing because you will start level one on the Zaya, and it's a lot of damage. I actually don't think most AD carries can deal with that damage. And if Double Lift goes up here, which I don't think he will, he'll go right into stun. So this is actually an incredible setup to start here from FlyQuest on the bottom side. It was kind of a gambit that he took. And yeah, he's not going to go up. All right, he's sensing there's got to be something a little bit wrong here. Yeah. All right, he walks away. Double Lift's not going to fall prey to that one. But Walk to your support. I do like the idea. Because, like you said, starting off with the W on Zayat level 1, when Rakan is your lane partner, I was actually talking to Freak about this the other day and about what he thinks about AD carries in the current state of everything. And he said, yeah, you take W on Zaya level 1 all the time, because, but only with Rakan. That's the only yes. champion to take W level 1 with because it's so effective, because the damage is so good. So that trap not going to succeed this time around. Let's watch Shrimp here. Shrimp looks like he might be going for a level two gank on mid with Keen. Remember, we talked about that jungle mid synergy. And Shrimp was always known for the clever routes, going for Poe Belter, level Garvin. one. Very effective level two ganker. EQ combo gonna be sidestepped, so Poe Belter not thrown up into the air by that one. He'll lose a lot of HP still. I still think this is great from Shrimp because you can't really counter as the Sejuani. You get low in your jungle clear, especially this clear that he opted for where he went red into Raptors, which is probably the most damaging camp in the early game. And now he's going to his easy side of the jungle here. And if he were to try and counter jungle Shrimp, he'd have to go to his Raptors or his Krugs, which are just time consuming. So I actually think Shrimp won't really be punished here in his jungle, and he'll be able to push Poe Belter out. Didn't get a summoner, but got a lot of that HP off. I mean, we see a lot of our junglers starting with Hunter's machetes these days, right? Because it seems to be the superior jungle item in almost every case. But the problem with it is machete without the talisman heal does make that raptor camp incredibly damaging, so hard to deal with in terms of getting away from it and still being able to make a play somewhere else on the map after and not just continue farming. So Keen now with plenty of opportunity in mid lane here to take control over this with that early gank. 18 to 8 in terms of CS. The taunt connects, but the instant Valkyrie away, Poe Belter still loses about a third of his health. Yeah, Poe Belter, though, does burn the teleport to get there and has a refillable potion now. He started Cole and Potion and then used that one pot because of the gank. But now Keen, we'll see if he ends up going for a back at all here uh, because he is healthy and out on the map, but he doesn't have that teleport. He'd have to swap the Ignite, which he's been going for some kill pressure with uh, for that spell. And you said you like seeing the level two gank from Shrimp. And I want to continue to specifically watch how he plays with Keen, because we know these guys have history. Mm -hmm. We know these guys played together on Dignitas last year. And I want to see how much of that residual synergy shines through this game. There's got to be a reason that FlyQuest made the call to say, look, we've been playing with Keen for a couple of weeks now. He's had some solid performances. Let's get Shrimp in there now and see what we can do with this combo. Over and uh, of course, who? Had a pretty okay week last week. Played in uh, Academy yesterday, and it wasn't that, you know, wasn't that uh, great. We'll see here. Poe Belter still has his flash. This just seems like that focus, right? This is a pretty, I would say, decent lane to gank, and we'll see here. You'd have to burn flash to continue. Flash taunts into the charge. Not going to result in a whole lot, except Keen losing quite a bit of health on that. It was a little audacious to go for that, I think. Got the flash, though, so I guess when Shrimp hits level 6, he might be able to go in and lock up Poe Belter, but you still have to worry about that Valkyrie. So Poe Belter's doing a good job of playing with the pressure on him right now, because when you have uh, a jungler that doesn't win that 1v1 matchup, you're going to have to kind of soak those ganks. Smithy winning out on that trade there, but that's the difference in terms of how you deal with pressure, right? You're either, you either crumble under the pressure or you absorb it effectively. And right now, Poe Belter's doing a great job at absorbing it. Of course, you're going to fall behind when the jungler's putting that much focus on you, but you have to do it with grace, poise. And now, the engage in the bottom side from FlyQuest looking to grab some damage onto Double Lift, but there's what we're talking about with Tom Kench. Double Lift gets in trouble, Ole saves him. Yep, just eats him right up, keeps him safe. Up against that Rakan, and the Rakan looks like he has the uh, unsealed spellbook here to potentially go for some more plays later, where he can maybe TP in. Uh, or even just have the lower cooldown on Flash is very beneficial. And I like this uh, Spell Thief's Edge. It's interesting because some of the nerfs to Relic Shield and, and the coin line, people were talking about how it really hurts for Khan because he loved Talisman of Ascension. And he, in other cases, he liked the HP and he was a really good Spell Thief's user. But the Spell Thief's actually helps him out in a shoving lane where if you can get those auto attacks off on somebody like Tom Kench who's melee or get him on the turret which you're shoving the wave with the Zaya Feathers, then you actually do have a pretty good amount of gold income uh, come that mid game from that item. And talking about keystones, just want to point out on your AD carries, you do have fleet footwork on Zaya, no spellbook on either one of them. Lethal tempo for Doublelift Varus. So if he gets some free firing time in these team fights into that front line of FlyQuest, he's going to have a lot of damage output. Yeah, it's interesting because lethal tempo is kind of the one that a lot of people were saying isn't that great. And then 
it got buffed a bit, uh, and then press the attack was kind of pushed out because a lot of people thought, how, when are you ever going to get three attacks off in the laning phase? Mm -hmm. And so it just looks like instead of looking at sustain here for the bottom lane for TL with the clean footwork, he's just going for that mid-late game uh, in terms of the attack speed. And Varus will actually break the attack speed cap with his passive because his passive gives him bonus attack speed based off the bonus attack speed that he's purchased. So as you build Rage Blade and Wits and multiplicative attack speed, exactly, you're going to get more off of your passive. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how quickly Double Lift can actually manage the stutter stepping in team fights and the attack moving. Yeah, it's going to be a test of mechanics. But for somebody who says everybody else is trash, when that's your tagline, you want those opportunities to show off mechanics. You want to show why you've got the ability to outplay everybody else. So hopefully we will get some shiny moments from him there. Checking in on where the gold is. 10,000.3 gold, 9,000.9 .9 gold. Very, very close game between these two squads. You can see top lane, a very slight gold lead for Flame over his opponent. He does have about a 10 CS advantage there. Jungle, Edge going over to Xmithy a bit. Mid lane, very, very close. It's Meganar from Flame finds its way onto the Orn, but not really going to get a whole lot else out of it. A lot of times you'll see them use those ultis just for lane control. Yeah, trying to just push back and forth there. Uh, Smithy up top, though, and Flame is a bit up, and there's the call. Forge got. All right, let's see if he can hit it. Nice. Flash away from the second part, but oh. he's still looking to make this happen. The Chain CC will bring him down, or will it? First blood to Xmithy. I had to bust out the watch for that one and time that because the Brittle, people forget this, Brittle increases the duration of the next crowd control the person's hit by, so he wasn't hit by the Forge God ultimate. He's still Brittle afterwards, and that means the Sejuani stun on the ultimate is going to last pretty much as long as the Morgana binds. Let's watch this really Ooh. quickly. Flash right. out of the way. Looks still good. Brittle. Not as good. Snap the flash. He's just going to be stunned up that whole time, and then he gets knocked up at the very end and finished off by the red buff. Red buff ticks away, and that dead Nar is going to be gold in the pockets of the jungle and top laner for Team Liquid, bringing their team up to an almost 1,000 gold lead as we were just checking in, looking at how close things were. Likewise, we'll pass the blue buff off to their mid laner, and Team Liquid, we talked about, yeah, look at the bottom lane for these guys. Watch that. Like, we're wanting to see this carry potential from double lift, especially now that the Relic Shield things have been nerfed and it allows more opportunity in the bottom lane to go aggressive. But if Team Liquid can switch things up, if they can say, okay, we're just going to get a Smithy and Impact ahead, we're going to make sure that our front line is so strong, you have no way to even deal with that, that's a win condition on its own. Impact, though, still working on getting those items going. The nice part about playing the Ornn, of course, you don't have to go back to base. You've got the gold to buy something. You don't exactly want to go back. You can always stay in the lane, purchase those items, just keep yourself safe for three seconds to complete the channel. And it's one of the nice parts about Ornn. There There's are a lot, lot of nice, of nice I mean, parts about Ornn. First off, you're Ornn. <laughs> Second off, they don't have Ornn. Yep. But yes, I actually really like this because uh, there's so many things about Ornn, even though he got nerfed, right? The Unstoppable was removed from the W and I believe the uh, cooldown of the ultimate was increased, which was one of the big complaints about playing against him. So it just means you don't get as many opportunities to throw it out, uh, but if you're really adept at the champion, you're going to try to make them worth every single time. And so far, Impact's first one was worth it, and his next one's coming up soon. All right, Keen whiffs the first couple abilities in that combo there. Does land a little from the Winds of War, but Cobelter returns plenty of damage of his own. Remember, those shiny gold rockets means the package is ready for delivery. So if you're fly quest, you're being careful until that's expended. There you go. Timer's about to run out, so Cobelter has no choice but just use it on the lane minions. Like Smithy hanging around mid here, seeing what exactly could happen, which isn't a lot right now, but it is first Drake, Infernal Drake, which means teams want to fight for this. This is almost always going to be taken earlier than any other Drake that could spawn. That's why you're seeing a lot of focus around this area from Team Liquid right now. Yeah, and not much kind of happened in the game since those early parts uh, for FlyQuest where they went for mid lane and went for Cobelter. There wasn't a revisit from Shrimp. He kind of got tied up because he was topside um, and going for his own gank. So he didn't really get to capitalize off of Cobelter's burn flash, even though he now has Cataclysm. Now we're seeing things where these engages, you're going to have to make it really count. All right, stun goes in, trying to make this one happen. Ole immediately going to be looking to save double lift, but the stun, the CC, everything coming down now in a wild turtle. The Galio entrance makes his way into the fight as Orn also going to be summoning the Forge God, trying to take down Shrimp and Keen as they make their way into the lines of Team Liquid. Keen going to be Hourglass Shrimp as well, still trying to get himself away, but not today. Double lift with the kill. Make it two for the Team Liquid AD carry. And Flame is just trying to run across the map during that whole thing because he doesn't have TP, and Impact did, but ends up TL getting those two for O. Oh. 
Very well done by Team Liquid now, enjoying a comfortable 2,000 gold lead for themselves. Next Drake's going to be Infernal as well. So if they continue to build these early game leads, that's just going to build itself into an even greater lead through those damage multipliers. Things are going Liquid right now. Yeah, and it's a really interesting engage. And I was just talking about this, where you really have to make this engage count because people have stopwatches right now. People also have all their flashes because we haven't had kind of skirmishes or action beforehand. So the more people you have to blow cooldowns here, the better. And you see TL bring five people strong. And then I like that Orn ultimate over onto Shrimp because that stops him from going for a Cataclysm immediately. Even though maybe the Orn ultimate could have gone down bottom and towards the duo lane, they went for the side and sectioned off the bottom lane, who were actually respecting the fact that they were probably going to get Orn ulti. Yeah, they focused the right targets. They did the fight the way they needed to in order to succeed with that one. It was just well played by Team Liquid as a five-man unit. And now, FlyQuest has to make sure they don't allow this to get built into something more, right? I mean, you're down 2,000 gold. That doesn't feel good, but at the same time, it's not one of those unwinnable situations yet. You've got to make sure you staunch that bleeding, recover yourselves. Winnable. Get, exactly, winnable. you got to get that tilt-proof honor here and make sure that you recover so you can make a play whenever the next objective is. Yeah, but playing against TL, TL, they, you know, boot camped a little bit earlier than other teams. They've had those months of experience now coming in. That was one of the things that they said would help them in their first match against TSM, where they won very handily. And since then, only 100 games has really tripped them up. And right now in this game, being up 3-0 and having five people in that skirmish bottom lane, it looks like the communication for TL is on point. Whereas you look at the FlyQuest, two subs coming in, it's not at that same level right now. Speaking of things not being on the same level, the itemization differences. Look at those big power spikes coming online for Liquid, especially after getting that double kill in the pockets of Double Lift. You've got your Rage Blade for Varus. You've got your Trinity Force for Corky. These are big items across the board. Yes, you've got the Abyssal Mask on Galio, but Ole, with a swift tongue, steals it away. That's why you gotta bench him. It's the swag walk from... Yeah, he just struts back, man. He knows what he did. He's proud. I'd be proud, too, if I stole it away. Yeah. That was the jungler. I don't even have Smite. Man. And I'm looking at Shrimp's build, too, and he's actually aggressive. He has Warrior, so he's quite squishy here. Especially Which when behind. Could be an issue if he gets caught out. X Smithy looking oh, to make these plays. Poe Belter coming around to help out with this one, too. Keen now going to be stunned up. This could be two for zero for Liquid. Absolute tragedy for FlyQuest. And TL, they're going to push this mid turret. Like you said, Trinity Force Power Spike means so much there. And Keen and Shrimp, we talked about the synergy. They're going to die together on this one because it was an aggressive move forward from Xpithy, who we usually know as the person who's just trying to set up the lanes. But he sees an advantage and he's pushing it. Xmithy also, like you said, he's tanky on this Sejuani, right? He can go in and make these kind of plays. Shrimp, the one who's exposed here. Yeah, and he's trying to make that combo because he does have that Sejuani, which actually does a lot of damage with the percent HP from the E into the ultimate auto attack. The taunt here by some time, but Pole Belter goes forward to assist, and that's how they pick up both of those kills. And Smithy is just doing work there. I mean, that initial Sejuani combo did so uh, much. Meanwhile, okay. TP comes in, Pole Belter. Trying to make sure this one stays okay. Double up, gonna go ahead, pop the Hourglass. Still looking to get himself out. Might be able to. Never mind, they get the shutdown, but what is it gonna cost, Irene? It's still a three for one, a four for one. Excuse me, Double Lift goes down, but Team Liquid. What a victory. You ask me what it's going to cost. A blasting in the bottom lane here. Four for one overall. This is a two on two kill. Double lift ends up getting the kill here. Oh. Still picks him up, doesn't die, and then they get that counter kill. And there's a canceled TP from Flame, who looked like he was trying to come in. And then, nope. Now it's a four on two to end the whole fight. And Flame's the only one who was like, I'm not going to die with everybody down here. Oh, man, that stopwatch from Double Lift, the timing was right where it needed to be, too. Made sure that the Jarvan was going in on him, dodged the damage, and prolonged the fight long enough that even though he still had to die, the cost of that was so immense for the enemy team that Team Liquid now finds themselves 7,000 gold up 15 minutes in. Now, Zyrene, let's go back in time about four minutes when FlyQuest was down 2,000 gold, and I said they can't afford to bleed this out any further. They got to make sure they're hanging on and not letting this game get out of control. That much of a gold lead that far into the game is out of control. And right now, Team Liquid is out of control in the enemy jungle. Shrimp running for his life. But his opponents stand between him and his own base. Double it fires off the piercing arrow. Shrimp will get away. But it seems like FlyQuest have absolutely no hold on any part of the map. And it looks like they're just flailing around. Even in that last team fight that we saw, Stunt used Cleanse. 
for no reason, and I feel like that's because he swapped it from Summoner Spellbook. I think he was trying to ignite Double Lift to finish him off, and it was one of those ones where you're swapping your Summoner Spells all over the place. You do have to be in the moment and realize exactly which one you have, but Instinct kicks, kicks in where you go, I usually have Ignite in the last year I've been playing this champion. Mm -hmm. Shrimp, now once again forced back. That Warrior not paying off so far. He just can't afford to walk near anybody on Team Liquid. He's just so far behind. He's level 9 versus level 10. He doesn't have much of an HP pool to work with at all. Infernal Drake now going to be started up by Team Liquid. They want to force this one. They say there's no way you guys can fight a 7k down at 15 minutes. This is ours. Yeah, they have an immense gold lead right now. They've been playing very quickly. This is something that you know, people have been wanting to see, and we said from the start, you want to be one of those top teams. You want to be a great team. Yep. Show me the ability to make these opportunities. Show me a team that can find ways to push the tempo. And right now, that's what Liquid is doing. Two Infernal Drakes, 16 minutes into the game, 7,000 gold lead. Now how do you push it further? I don't want to see them let up on the accelerator here. I don't want to see them decide to just coast all the way through till 25 minutes and try to force a Baron and let things happen. I want to see the tempo of this game push faster and faster and faster until eventually you just break the base and win the game. And I think they're going to keep pushing for that as well. They have the tools with the rotation from the Tom Kench. They have done multiple teleports here. And then they also have ways to engage, right? The Varus can engage. The Sejuani, the Orn. During sieges, you can really push people off turrets. So I feel like with this advantage, TL will keep pushing. Double Infernal just makes it so that that gold is multiplied, basically, in terms of combat stats. And with Poe Belter, now it is two item spike and an Infinity Edge completed. I definitely feel like you're knocking down turrets now and swapping things up as we see TL swap to the bot from the bottom to the, t to the top here. Not only do you have two items on the Notorious POB, you've got them on Double Lift as well. He just picked up his Runan's Hurricane combined with the Rage Blade. That's going to make him that much scarier in these team fights, especially with the lethal tempo. In the top lane, if you look at Impact, he's got Frozen Heart. He's working on the pieces for his own Abyssal Mask, which is thus just going to multiply the damage from Varus and Corky and Sejuani and himself even more. Mm -hmm. Whoa, this seems scary. And right now, if you're TL, this is how you start closing out the game. Top lane turret, Rift Herald. Simultaneously, push for that. Use the Rift Herald to get a tier two, depending on where you see FlyQuest answer. Because FlyQuest do not have the tempo to answer this top lane turret. Late on the rotation, and TL caught them with the pants down, and they're also going to get that Rift Herald at the same time, without giving up anything on the other side of the map. All right, turret going down means this game's going to go up to 8,500 lead on the side of Team Liquid. Xmithy takes this down slowly but surely. It doesn't do any real meaningful damage to the Sejuani. 3k HP, should get one more eyeball proc, and then it'll drop. Nope, no eyeball from Shelly, but she'll still go down there. We'll have to see exactly where they decide to deploy this one. Baron will be live in one and a half minutes. And this is one of those kinds of games where you might see a team be able to take it very early. 20 minutes, 21 minutes, somewhere around there. Typically, you don't get to see it because it is very dangerous, but typically you don't have a 9,000 gold lead at that point in the game either. Or it gets traded for a dragon on the other side, but with no dragon up and the perfect timing here, this is what... So now I'm going to start casting the game from, like, if you're going from a perfect macro standpoint from TL's position, what they should be doing next. Because right now, all those tier 1 turrets are out. This is prime Tom Kench using the ultimate to flank uh, material. So if Zaya wants to clear a side lane, she can't go past her tier 2 turret and a little bit further because you're going to get Tom Kench all teed in the back. Uh, because Baron is up in one minute, you should return to the top side of the map here and ward it up and start playing around that area and forcing it. But you can throw those curveballs. Looks like we're going to be throwing out the Forge God as well. Good dodge away from both that and the package from Flame, keeping himself safe. Has Shrimp waiting in the wings if they want to try further, but Liquid will just accept trading off those resources in exchange for the Flash for now. Yeah, get that flash, make sure that there can't be a flash after a teleport for the Gnar. And this just sets up their team fight better. I actually feel like TL want to look at Baron at the 20 minute mark on the dot. Double lift, the reason that they didn't want to force a uh, team fight after the Rift Herald was because he didn't have flash for about 20 seconds. Why do that when you have such an advantage, 20 seconds to wait, and you can basically guarantee that your AD carry is going to be safe. So now I feel like you push out your waves mid and top, you force your bottom lane just to keep pushing a little bit, and then you go ahead and you look at that Baron and maybe set something up with all the pick that you have. Team Liquid looking like that 3 and one team, looking like that team that at the end of week two we said looked like they could be a top-level team playing competitive League of Legends in 2018 because these guys, if you look at the star power on the roster, they got the potential. Ooh. Man, Poe Belter there, he's like farm in the jungle, he's going for optimal timing there. Xmithy wanted to be on the side where Baron is, so he's like, not gonna do my blue, not gonna help Leash, not even gonna do my Gromp, and Pobelter takes both for the maximum. He's two levels up over his opponent. 
Smithy now once again going to flex those jungler muscles in enemy territory, setting down plenty of wards. This is what I like to see, getting that vision control, choking your opponents yep. out of their own side of the map, making it dangerous to get away from any of your own structures. Keen and Shrimp both having to back away now. And right now, Impact roaming up from the bottom side. He pushed to the Tier 2. They get to force on the Tier 2 mid and top. And they, don't, they aren't worrying too much right now about an engage. And they're going to put down that Rift Herald in the mid lane, trying to use that rotation from the Ornn. All right, Shelly summoned up mid means that's where the focus is going to be. Smithy on the front line. Cobalt are going to be putting damage into the turret. It's almost down. The close doesn't count just yet. Turret falls. Cobalt are backing away, losing a little under half HP. All right, and now's the point in the game where you have the Baron is live, but there's a minute on the Mountain Break. So you want to have position around Mountain, but you also want to have wards all over the Baron. So you ward up Baron, position around bottom side, if that's really what you're looking for in the Mountain Break. Uh, and I feel like TL will do that with one or two members and play towards that side. It's the easy to secure objective, and it helps you secure the Baron faster. So it kind of gets you towards that point where it's easier to get that final uh, kind of push that you really want going. I really like this Scorched Earth approach from Doublelift as he leaves the jungle. Just take everything with you, leave nothing behind. Poor jungle. Starve your opponents from every possible resource you can deprive them of. It makes this game's lead nearly five digits. We're almost at a 10,000 gold lead, 22 minutes in. Drake spawning, like you said, 15 seconds from now. You can see the assist me ping coming out from Team Liquid, so they are looking at that. And you're talking about Scorched Earth. It's so hard to get resources here for all of FlyQuest. Kane, actually just gonna ulti right there. He's gonna get engaged on. Tries to use it One more himself hit. away. Po Belt are unstoppable. Jumping in, getting himself that last auto attack. FlyQuest, no way to defend their mid laner. No way to fight now, four versus five. Po Belt is still hanging around Valkyrie. Be gobbled up to safety as now the counterattack from Team Liquid. The Chains of Corruption come out. They will not find a lot, though. The Cleanse ending up getting stunt out of trouble. Call of the Forge God comes through. Shrimp flashing away from that one. Tries to get himself out with the EQ combo. Does do so. That means his flash is down. And does that mean that TL are going to go for the play here and try to get this Baron? They have such a massive lead. Trying to just get rid of all the vision. They didn't quite get that ward that's in the pit. All right, let's see, do they go for it? Mountain Drake is up, your opponent's mid laner is still dead, but he does have TP and he's up in just one second. I think they're gonna err on the side of caution here. Minimizing risks, yep. Minimizing risks and therefore minimizing mistakes. And yeah, they let the top wave push towards them. And so they were on bottom and mid waves, and that's around the Mountain Drake, which they got a fight, which helps them push where they wanna go. It's kind of one of those things where you plan the macro around these objectives, and if something falls into your hands like that, and you were kind of ready for it. You're not looking for a fight. You're just, if something happens and we get it, it's kind of icing on, on the cake. Just trying to get on cherry on top there. All right, FlyQuest still hasn't found their footing in this game. They still haven't it's gonna found be hard. anywhere close, honestly. I mean, you've got two items up on your Zaya. You've got two items up on your Galio. The Jarvan just still incredibly far behind and almost completely useless going with this Bruiser build warrior into what appears to be a Black Cleaver. But when you're a zero and three Jarvan, when you're 50 CS behind your opponent when you're incredibly behind the curve of the game, that's just not going to cut it. And this is what I was uh, kind of getting towards right before that whole team fight just broke out, was you're talking about Scorched Earth. The resources are so hard to get for FlyQuest. And when you have a Jarvan that's building this way, it means even more because you want to stay ahead. And when you are behind and vastly behind, you don't even get to really participate in fights because you only have like 1700 HP and you're about like a squishy as your AD carry. So he's going to be very easy to focus off, and he's the lowest level on his team tied with the support. And it's just going to be so hard for this Jarvan to really operate in these fights. And I was looking at the gold. Pobelter is massively ahead. He's almost 5,000 gold up over Keen in this game. And pretty much across all lanes, we're seeing large advantages. 2,000 gold for the 80 carries, 2,000 for the jungle. It's just that top lane that's pretty even, but that's really not a lot of where your damage is coming from. And that kind of a gold lead is a green light for Team Liquid to go onto the Baron as Stunt tries to jump in. Keen wants to come down too. Baron's already been secured. One death on the side of FlyQuest, but it's also going to be a death on the side of Liquid. Impact gets found out by himself, so at least there's some little bit of light shining in the dark uh -huh. there for FlyQuest. But now, your Sejuani ulti comes in. The rest of the members are going to be routed. Oh, Trip damn it. it away. And the ace comes in off the triple kill for Poe Belter. Man, I was talking about how he's 5,000 gold up. He's got so much cash, so much bank. He's basically Steve at this point. He is just going in, and that is, those crits are insane. This is that sweet spot for the core team. 8, 0, and 3. They've got that one little caster minion there, breaking the back door protection. Team Liquid completely steamrolling this game. Now it looks like Poe Belter already goes to the bottom, trying to get the maximum and shove the waves. 
and that is huge for them. We are only 25 and a half minutes in, and we are seeing a massive 15,000 gold advantage as Impact is pretty much charged with keeping Shrimp away from the Baron. No 50-50 here. Shrimp can't even get close to it before it's down, and that's what costs Impact's life. I say he dies for the greater good. He's the sacrificial mountain goat or whatever Orn is. <laughs> But then the rest of the team, they're not gonna they're not oh, gonna let him die in vain. Not exactly. today. It's the ace. I mean, that is 100 percent worth. That is the tank player's job right there. Definitely. Zero one and four, making it all happen. Definitely like that move from him. And now they get to just do a full court press. They have teleports on both Poe Belter and Impact with massive advantages on that solo laner of Poe Belter here. All right, push coming down. Big shove from Team Liquid. Four men strong top side. You've got Poe Belter hanging out in mid lane, just saying, hey, I've got enough pushing power on my own to take Nexus turrets. Man, we have a Flame Horizon in the mid lane at 26 and a half minutes here for Poe Belter. 100 CS up. And remember, he got ganked two times at the beginning of the game. He did not die, didn't blow his flash in the first one, blew his flash in the second one, but still was able to come back in this game. Now he's crushing it. FlyQuest trying to start things off. Stunt gonna be going in. They almost catch out, double it, but that's not gonna do it. Keen coming in too, trying to make the hero's entrance. It will not matter. Poe Belter legendary. Flame trying to get himself going back. Forward. Ole with a nice save, Poe Belter. He's still got a stopwatch. They can't do anything with the Zaya ulti. Poe Belter still raining down the damage. The turret falls. Flame having a flash away. Keen gonna be gunned down. Legendary for the mid laner on Team Liquid as they look to find their win. It's gonna be close to that fastest game time here again, Zyrene. Poe Belter Ooh. finally taken down by Wild Turtle. Zaya, can they defend at their fountain? Ole gobbling up his jungler, trying to keep him safe. Ix Smithy gonna be spit right back out. Double it, five Firing seconds. into the Nexus. Can they beat their own record? Oh. Yes, they can! By two seconds, Team Liquid with a fancy, fast win. Team Liquid never letting up the pressure, and that'll once again put them in a tie for first place. What a showing from this team. So many expectations from people after seeing the offseason changes coming into the 2018 spring split, and those expectations, Irene, are being met. This team seems to get better and better each game we see them play. Even the one game that they lost, like you said, they bounce back with a vengeance. They learn from their mistakes, and they are looking good. 27 and a half minutes there on the clock. Oh, don't you do them, don't you do them a disservice. That was 27, 29, not even 27 and a half. Yeah, going by the Nexus explosion. Sometimes the, the clock keeps ticking as it's ending, but yeah. All right, all right, yeah, the, the, the clock's doing them a I don't know which here. one the official is, but. All right, all right, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, doesn't matter. TL, what matters is that win moving to four and one. And like I said, that four-way tie for first place Oh, the damage this game, by the way. Let's go ahead and <laughs> by the uh, way, let's go ahead and look at this. Twenty-four thousand damage from the Corky of Poe Belter. The next highest one was around eleven and a half thousand from both eighty carries. Half the damage. Nobody came close to Poe Belter's damage. The closest person is even less than half of his damage. So. That's on both teams as well. Poe Belter, you saw, he hit that sweet spot with the Corky. He survived the laning phase, the level two gank, kind of that 200 IQ outplay, made it through, got to the point where he had the Trinity Force, they played around that power spike, and then they just kept going with two Infernal Drakes behind him as well. And all of that AD from the Infinity Edge, that guy was just crushing and critting people's faces off. And remember, this is the same guy who, at level one, got ganked by the enemy jungler, who was constantly pressured, who, like we said, was absorbing that pressure and playing around it well. Clearly, that plan did not succeed. Yeah, and he was pretty good on those roams as well. Matching a Galio is not always that easy, but he had the pressure, and I like the Corky pick, because it's something we really haven't been seeing, right? We're seeing things like the Azir, we're seeing Malzahar, Ryze, Cassiopeia, Zoe, Galio, but he's saying this is something that has worked against Galio in the past, and it's gonna be effective here, because it gives him the way, uh, ability to kind of match, push, shove, and then join his team, and I really like the way that he played that, and I think that this is a pick that, moving forward for Poe Belter, because it's been one in his, kind of his pocket for a long time now, yeah. one that you definitely have to watch out for, because he looked clean. And I think back on the desk, Mark is going to be happy about this one, too, because I was talking to Mark last week in Academy, and he was like, I'm ready to see some more Corky. And we got to see it last week, and now we got to see it here in the North American LCS on the biggest stage. So looking at that, it was a lot of fun to watch. But now we're going to send things down to Avli May and the Team Liquid Support. Thanks, guys. I am here with Ole. Congratulations on your win and the fastest win in the split so far. Oh.
I want to ask you a little bit about FlyQuest surprise substitution. They put shrimp in the jungle. Did you guys, were you surprised by that? And did you have to change any plans going into the game? Uh, actually, before we start to play game, uh, our team just say, oh, they changed jungler. But actually, Andy is my last roommate, and I, I believe he is much better than people thought. So, and when they change, I feel like, oh, we have to beat. Then they're going to feel Andy is better. So, yeah. And, yeah, and then we just check uh, shooting champion pool, and then maybe we change some uh, our band pick. But, yeah. We expect that. I want to ask you a little bit about you and your bot lane partner, Doublelift. In the Team Liquid squad video, it looked like there was a little bit of tension between you guys during practice. Has that been fixed and resolved? And how do you deal with Doublelift? Oh, <laughs> uh, I think when I like when we talk together, sometimes Doublelift say something mean, and then I got hurt, and he said. Like, like, after I got hurt, and he suddenly said, oh, it's just joking. I was just like, what, what, what is that? And, but that happened really a lot. Like, he didn't mean, I, I don't know if that's an American joke or his joke, I, I don't know. But yeah, and then I talked to him. Uh, maybe I don't, sometimes I don't understand your slang. Sometimes I don't understand your mean. But yeah, I asked him politely, can you talk to me some in you know, a nice way, and he, he said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice, and yeah, we turned to be fine, so. That sounds like a great friendship in the bot lane. Overall, team synergy and morale, since you began, since you guys met each other as a team, we're now in the third week, has the synergy and morale evolved over that time? Uh, I think after we won first week, we turned to be kind of, oh, maybe we are, we are a good team now, but yeah, as people watch the squad, we turn to be kind of complacent and we try to uh, t fix the problem. And now I think it's fine. I think after we lost to Wondrous Thieves, I think that was really good motivation to us. And I think now everything is fine and we just need to work hard. Well, I thank you so much for this interview. And to wrap up this game, let's hear it from the guys at the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you, Avali. Another four and one team from Team Liquid, Woo. this time with a new fastest game time by three seconds, breaking their previous record for the split just last week. These guys continue to impress mm. in their victories, and I think even made more impressive when you look at the average game time of the league as compared, uh, win time rather, should specify average yep. win time of the league as compared to Team Liquid's average win time. It's astronomical. They're faster than the LPL. The LPL is clocking in at about 30 ah. minute average, which is eight minutes faster than what the NALCS average normally Take is. That frost, uh, and what's funny to me is, they have the three fastest games. <laughs> They've only it's won insane. four of them, and three of them are the fastest. Uh, they know how to close. Team Liquid is good. That's what I got there to There it is. There Team go. Liquid is pretty good. Yeah. Of course, they did have to deal with shrimp being subbed in, and we can get into that a little mm -hmm. bit. But as we kind of start rolling through the game itself, I want to take a look at the individuals on the roster for Team Liquid, and in particular, the mid laner, Pobelt. Yeah, and Pobelter had such an understated impact on the early game of how dominant this was. The fact that he didn't flash that TP's back to lane, still has flash as well for this, is able to avoid the gank which burned Keen's flash all the while he's there. They continue to farm, he's never pressured, he never loses the disadvantage, and then is eventually able to turn it around here, I believe with his third and fourth kills of the game. And this is really important because the top side of the map is actually very powerful for FlyQuest. You have Jarvan, you have Galio, and you have yeah. the Gnar, who all win their matchups uh, in the early portion of the game. So that should be a point of power that they then use to break open the rest of the map, and the Galio yeah. starts running around the map, but everything exactly. failed due to Pobelter's mechanic. All right, let's be honest though. Congratulations, you have a bunch of individually talented players. It doesn't mean anything if you can't come together as a group of five mm -hmm. and execute when it comes to that mid and late game and the team fighting stages of the game. Well, guess what? Team Liquid has that ability as well. We go to the dragon fights and we see some definite team fight prowess here. And this is very impressive because it comes right after they gank topside and force the TP back after the kill from Flame. So they can start this Infernal Dragon off knowing there's no TP to contest. Flame was trying his best to run down this entire time, but FlyQuest never should have tried to take this fight. And it just shows that Team Liquid understands how to snowball their advantages. 
You get a lead top size, flip down to the bot lane, and use that teleport. You know, Jat, we had said that Echo Fox to some degree looks or reminds us of the old Immortals. Well, Team Liquid and their game time, the way they're playing, at least in those quick wins, starting to look pretty reminiscent of the Immortals that yeah. crushed old 17 new Immortals. Yeah. Old new Immortals, exactly. 2017, we need to start time stamping these teams. 2017 Immortals, 2016 Immortals. Uh, this one would be the speed of the 2016 Immortals. Team. Yeah. I also uh, like how they carried over a lot of the camaraderie. You could tell the guys that were on that team last year really liked each other. Even when we had Cody Sun talking about playing against Team Liquid, how he wanted to be on that team. Yep. We had Ole in this interview saying he was roommates and friends with Onda, who was benched for this game. So he's like, we got to smash him <laughs> extra hard so they know to play with that guy because he's really good. And let's maybe take a moment then to talk about that jungle substitution. I mean, Ole calling it out pretty bluntly there. He thinks that Onda is a strictly a better jungler. What were our thoughts on Shrimp's appearance here on the NALCS stage? This is a weird one because I understand what they're thinking. Keen doesn't take up an import slot. Maybe Shrimp's an upgrade. We can try that out but doing it against team liquid who's one of the best teams in the league and then shrimp plays this notoriously aggressive play style that's very feast or famine yeah. came out completely empty this famine. game and so you didn't really learn anything new it's like we played a really aggressive jungler against the best coordinated yeah. team in the league yeah it's too small of a sample size usually people do the substitutions for a reason it was probably working in scrims mm -hmm. based off of what we have seen no way. Like, Onda was much better in LCS, uh, but a very difficult circumstance for Shrimp to come in against this team, with his ganks being outplayed by Paul Belter. I actually really thought that was a great time for a level 2 gank, because it could unlock the Galio, but when it doesn't work, you're destroyed. My final question, can you point out a weakness in Team Liquid right now for NA teams to exploit? Uh, it's really, really hard. Uh, there's nothing that jumps out because they have good synergy. All their laners are pretty strong. Yeah. The, the concern was, will Impact be like the kind of summer season seven where he was getting dumpstered a lot of time? And that looks like a no. So you're left with just be a better coordinated team with strong laners who can match them. Yeah, I'm being really nitpicky if I'm playing yeah, yeah, this, but it would be Impact on carries. Right. Uh, he had okay. a good GP game. His Vladimir game was lacking. He's kind of not done well on non-tanks other than GP, but that's that's a nitpicky thing. Yeah, exactly. Strong team. Exactly. Well, we're going to have to look for nitpicky stuff as the team look good roster rather continues to impress. Up next, TSM duke it out against the Golden Guardians where Azale, Febivin, and Power of Evil will be bringing you the game on Riot Games 2 from the NALCS Lounge. Don't go anywhere. Flash away from the second part, but oh. he's still looking to make this happen. The chain CC will bring him down, or will it? First blood to expend. Team Liquid Keen going to be Hourglass Shrimp as well. Still trying to get himself away, but not today. Double it with the kill. Make it two for the Team Liquid AD carry. I'm TP, I'm TP, I'm TP. I'm TP, I'm coming. I'm on yes, the I think. Okay. Nice. My bad, my bad. Peter, I'm sorry. Flame trying to get him both going back. forward. Ole with a nice save, Poe Belter. He's still got a stopwatch. They can't do anything with the Zaya ulti. Poe Belter still raining down the damage. The turret falls. Flame having to flash away. Keen going to be gunned down. Legendary. Double Damn, five firing seconds. into the Nexus. Can they beat their own record? Yes, oh! they can! By two seconds! Team Liquid with a fancy fast win. Welcome to Remember This, presented by State Farm. During Worlds 2015, we said goodbye to one of the greatest players ever to stalk the top lane in North America. With a heartfelt goodbye and a standing ovation, Dyrus left the pro scene, but not our hearts. 